Welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we're having a look at a very special train pack, as you can see, which is by Hornby. And you can easily tell from just how colourful the box is, and you can tell from the picture, that this is a Eurostar, class 373, but it's not just any old Eurostar. It is, just bring the box up up close, it's the Beatles Yellow Submarine Eurostar. Just look at that. Even from the box, it just looks amazing. So, um, if we turn to the back, so you get information on this particular train. Um, basically, not just the not just the class three seven three, but um, well, actually, no. It, this this particular one is only talking about uh, this particular class three seven three, which is sets three double o five and three double o six. And so history about basically how it came to be in this livery and um, also a bit of history afterwards as well. So now this train pack is very very special to me because it combines two of my favourite things in the world. Uh, one of them of course is trains as you well as you probably guessed by now based on my YouTube channel. <laughs> But um, the other favourite thing in my life is the Beatles. I have been an enormous Beatles fan for many, many years now. In fact, well, since I was a young boy, well, child really. I was about six, seven years old when I got introduced to the Beatles and I've never looked back since. I've always been a really, really big fan. So when I saw Hornby announce this train pack, I was absolute. I was shocked and over the moon at the same time because this was completely unexpected. I, I wasn't even aware that there was a Eurostar painted in this livery. Basically the story behind this is back in 1999 the Beatles Yellow Submarine movie which is um, as you can tell from the artwork it's an animated movie. The Yellow Submarine movie was released back in 1969 and in 1999, well, 19, no, was it 19, no, 1968. In 1999, they remastered the movie and brought it back out again. And in order to promote the launch of the movie, Apple Corps, who are the um, the distributors of the Beatles albums, they um, went ahead and they are and painted one of the Eurostar trains, well of course with Eurostar's permission of course, um, they painted one of the Eurostar sets, numbers 3005 and 3006, into this very special uh, livery to promote the launch, the relaunch of the movie. And the train basically showed scenes from the movie. And it was launched in 1999, it ran in this livery for about three months between London and Paris, and then it reverted back into its original Eurostar livery. But I mean, it is quite quite amazing how there was a train in this livery. In well, I mean, it was possibly the only train in the world to run in a Beatles Yellow Submarine livery. The sad thing about this particular set, though, number three double o five and three double o six, is that many many is that several years later it would be scrapped, like most of the three seven threes. Now, a bit of history about the 373s. So the class 373s, they were uh, built by various different um, build, uh, various different manufacturers. And they were built uh, for the start of Eurostar services in 1994. And they were, their design is based on the French TGV. Now there are, there were several modifications to ensure that the trains can work in the UK. For example, they're, they're, they are slightly smaller than the TGVs because they have to fit within the UK loading gauge, which isn't an issue now because obviously now you've got a uh, high speed one which is fully built, which is built to full European loading gauge standards. But at the start of Eurostar um, in 1994 and for several years afterwards, um, they obviously ran on the, uh, on the third rail between sort of Folkestone and Waterloo. So that to fit through the origin, the old infrastructure between those lines. Once HS1 opened in 2007, loading gauge no longer became an issue. So these trains were the longest um, high-speed 
trains in the world. They consist about of about 18 coaches plus the two power cars. So in total, you've basically got a 20 unit train, which is um, which is incredible. Um, these now these trains they started to be replaced by the new class 374s, which are 20 carriages long. The only difference is is that the 374 does not have a separate uh, they, they don't have separate power cars. 374 is fully, um, the two ends are basically just fully passenger units. It's only the 373 that had power cars at each end. Uh, most of them have been withdrawn and scrapped, though a few still remain in service. Um, they don't work all Eurostar services because they can only work services between St Pancras, Paris and Brussels. They cannot work the Eurostar services to Amsterdam because they they're not fitted. They're only fitted with the um, the TVM four hundred and thirty and the French signalling and the Belgian signalling and the British signalling. They're not fitted with the Dutch signalling. So yeah, but I mean it is good that these are, some of these are still in service, albeit as mentioned before, most of them have been scrapped, including this particular set that sported this livery back in nineteen ninety nine. Anyway, um, now the train is not in the box, I've already taken it out, I've given it a run in, I've uh, fitted it with DCC. The train itself is right here. Now this is just one unit, this is the first power car. Um, now I forgot to mention that it, this consists of two power cars and two coaches. The two centre coaches, they come with a shared bogey. Um, so, which is basically, it's it's what's known as a, a Jacob's bogey, where two coaches share the same bogey, and Hornby have represented that in more or less the same, um, quite a similar way in this pack. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the box, put the box to one side. Uh, the only other thing you get in the box, besides the instructions and obviously the train, is you get a little detail bag, or sort of a, de a little plastic bag with traction tyres. Um, if you want to fit traction tyres to the unit then you can do so. Personally I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of traction tyres so I'm not going to fit them. Anyway let's put the box to one side and we'll have a look at the actual train starting with the main power car. Wow. Wow, just absolutely beautiful. Let's start at the front. I mean, that you can easily tell that's a class 373. That iconic front end is just unmistakable. At the front, you can see it does say the Beatles just above that grill. That is such a nice touch. Now, I will point out one criticism is the fact that the train does not feature working lights. You can clearly tell the headlights are there but they don't work which is quite a letdown considering how beautiful this train pack is. I mean I'm sure you can fit lighting, lighting kits but I mean surely <laughs> Hornby should, should pre-fit headlights onto this considering the price of the train so that's a bit of a letdown but apart from that she looks absolutely gorgeous I mean come on this livery I think the most striking obviously the most striking thing about this particular train is the livery just wow the way they've managed to a plot. I mean, it was a must. I mean, it was a work of art on the real unit when it had the yellow submarine livery. But the fact that they've represented this almost perfectly in model form is just phenomenal. And this does recreate scenes. So this um, this recreates. This is the start of the movie when first in Pepperland, everything's happy. And then suddenly this guy, who's the, the chief blue meanie, he starts to attack Pepper Land and then, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not going to 
spoil the movie. If you want to watch the movie, go go watch. I do recommend it because it is a really really nice movie. It's a proper classic as well. Um, what they have done with this model is they basically on the real train it would show the same thing on both sides. On this one, um, because obviously the train is not long enough, what they've done is they've basically showing um, basically they're showing uh, two separate scenes so they're basically split so half of it shows what would have been shown on half of the real train and then the other half the other side shows the other half um, but I mean it just looks stunning and this is the leading power car because this does have the the powered bogey which as mentioned before does not have traction tyres those come in a little detail bag which you can fit the roof the roof looks really nice I mean it is one molded piece but the fact that they've sort of picked out um, you know what needs to be painted is really really nice so in that, that sense the roof is really nice it's not just you know a big lump of plastic left unpainted they have actually gone into the effort and paint some uh, some little details you get two pantographs as per the real train so here's one I do believe this is the um, this is the 25 kilovolt pantograph and this here oh, I'm not too sure what where where it uses this pantograph but this this is no it is noticeably different if I put the two pantographs up you can tell they are noticeably different because um, this is because the euro style is capable is um, dual voltage when the sense or originally they did have third rail shoe gear for them to work on the um, on the southern on the southern region between Waterloo and Folkestone before they entered the Channel Tunnel, but they are capable of working off multiple overhead line systems because there's a different voltage in France on the French classic lines and the Belgian classic lines. Turn to the back, you can see you get the focuses. Yep, there you go. Yep, there you go. So you can see you get what looks like a corridor, but obviously this is not a corridor connect. Um, I think that, that is a corridor connection, but obviously not for passengers. That is purely for service. You see, you get a propri proprietary coupling, which basically means it cannot work with any other train. It can only work with coaches of its type. Turn to the other side. This is. This shows the end of the movie, and. Um, see in several languages they put all together now which is a really really nice touch so yeah I mean this is the lead power car <coughs> excuse me and all in all I am I mean I've only looked at the power car but immediately I'm really impressed with this the only disappointment is of course the lack of working lights but I can kind of live with that, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll um, I'll stop banging on about it. What I will do is I'll put the since we've looked at the power car, I'll put this to one side, and we'll have a look at coach number one, which, as you can see, says Eleanor Rigby on the side, which is the um, second scene of the movie. I'm, I'm just spoiling the movie now, aren't I? All right, I'll stop. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the movie. I don't want, you know. I want you to watch it. Well, not. I'm not forcing you to watch it. But obviously, I don't want you to eventually be like, oh well. Mega Train Lovers already told me what, um, what what's going to be in the movie, so I know what's coming up. <laughs> Basically, I want to avoid spoilers. But yeah, uh, so you can see the, liv the livery does carry on, and it is really, really nice. Yet, um, in real life, this is a powered bogey. You get, you get a grill there, and it is, the grills are very nicely textured, I forgot to show on the power car, but the grills are really, really nicely textured. You can see there's a door there, which is obviously uh, not very notice, probably only noticeable from the window, obviously not very noticeable because of the, the special livery. Turn to the front, I like how they sort of represented the gangway connection, it's a really, really nice touch. If we turn to the other side, you see you get um, more special livery. It says all you need is love there. Hey, Bulldog. 
and at the end so now this coach is um, obviously more on molded piece but it does look quite nice it does have seats inside which you can clearly see so you can fit passengers in this if you wish now um, one thing you will notice is there's a bogey here but here there is no bogey this is the end where you connect to the other coach and this is Jacob's bogey formation so speaking of the other coach what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it here's the other coach uh, nothing much to talk about it it's the same as the um, as the one which we're going to couple this one up to it's got more scenes from the Yellow Submarine movie and on the other side as well also you can get the um, the extra coach pack which uh, adds an extra two coaches onto the Eurostar the same as on the older um, on the older Eurostars now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to couple these up so what you do is the this coach is coupled on I'm just going to turn the I'm just going to uh, turn the light on just me on a second so I'm just going to yep there you go so what you can see is that this coach is connected to the bottom half of this of the pin inside the bogey and so this coach connects to the top so all you do is you just locate it and just push and there you go now I'm try trying to get this into shot but yep there you go so you get the Jacobs bogey and then these coaches are now now have a shared bogey really really nice and that is as per reality as well the real train has shared bogey now I'm going to put the coach to one side or coaches rather because I've coupled both of them I'm going to have a look at the rear power car which is in model form at least is unpowered as you can see you get more special livery and there's the actual yellow submarine along with the cartoon versions of the Beatles also oh, I don't I don't remember his name I think his name I think he's um Oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> I know he's a uh, D nowhere man. Um, yep. Yeah. So there is the rear power car. Again, you get the dual pantographs. So for the different um, the different voltages that the Eurostar works on. And if we turn to the front, you can see you get the classic. Eurostar 373 shape and also the Beatles on the front. Again, sadly there's no working lights. Turn to the other side, more special livery. This one is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So yeah, I mean all in all I'm just going to put well, I'm not going to put them here because the coaches are quite long, but I mean all in all I am really impressed with this train pack. Uh, aside from the lack of working lights, of course, but um, the livery application, just I'm just in awe. It is just such a nice train, and obviously very iconic as well. I mean, it is, it is the Eurostar. <laughs> you know, it's been around for nearly 30 years. It's come to, it's become quite an integral part of the UK rail scene in a way. So yeah, but next thing to do is to see how the train performs. So here we have the Hornby Yellow Submarine Eurostar on the track. Uh, let's just have a quick look. She looks absolutely amazing. Just look at that. I absolutely adore this livery. Now the only, as I mentioned, the only criticism is the lack of working lights. That's a disappointment. But in any case, we're going to see her run. And the way she goes. Oh, I don't know what that was. Wow. She's running really nicely. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get a few 
stops of uh, passing the camera. So yeah, as you can see, she's running really, really well. Let's get her up to full speed. I mean, she is a high speed train after all. Yep, that's more like it. Careful, be careful she does not be real. Wow. Look at that. Just to conclude this video, and I've slowed her down because just to get a good shot of her. Just to conclude, I do recommend her. However, unfortunately, she is pretty much sold out with most retailers. Simply because she's just such a popular model. But I mean, if you can get her hand, put your hands on her, then it is a really, really good um, find. As I say, beautiful livery, very, very smooth performance, and just overall a really, really nice looking train. Just a shame she doesn't have working life. But anyway, thanks very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next review. Goodbye.